Welcome to Wildfire Outdoors. I'm T Mac, and today we're going to be talking about jam. All right, I'm going to give you a little recipe today that I use on my blackberry jams, and but it'll probably work for any kind of jam. This here is black and blue jam. That's what I call this. It's mixed between blackberries and blueberries, so and it's really good. I've already tasted it. But to make this jam, first thing you got to do. Go pick your blueberries and go pick your blackberries. I like to freeze my berries first, then soak them. Get them out of the freezer, let them thaw for a little bit, soak them in a bowl of water until they're nice and ready to go. Take your berries out of the water and either, you know, do what you got to do with them. Blueberries, suck them right in the food processor and just ground them up real good. You got a nice blueberry slurry. Put those, put them in my pot. Now the blackberries. My blackberries soaked them just like I did the blueberries. As when they're thawed out and done, take them out and put them in your juicer and just juice them. Okay, warning right here. This is messy, so be prepared to clean up after yourself. Okay, that's the key. I've been married for 15 years and I don't do it all the time. But when I'm in the kitchen, when I leave the kitchen, I like it to be you don't even know I was there. I can't stand going into a kitchen and it's messy or you know you can tell where someone's cooked uh, hate it I used to be a cook for I them. want a clean kitchen and when I leave it I want to leave it clean so there's a little tip marriage tip for you guys juice your blackberry seeds mix them in with your blueberries just mix it all up and then you get your sugar ready uh, this particular recipe for the amount I was doing was calling for a huge amount of sugar every recipe is a little different but uh, as far as cups goes, there was six cups of blackberries in this and six cups of blueberries. So equal numbers there. Throw them in your pot. And once you get them in there mixed up, turn on the heat. You know, you, you want to get it a boiling hot. So while that's heating up, what you want to do is you want to take your pectin. I use sure gel. And mix your bag of pectin with about a fourth a cup of sugar. Mix it all up. Okay, you can add the pectin straight to it, but sometimes it can clump up on you if you're not stirring quick enough. So, I always heard you add it with your sugar and that helps. So, add your pectin to your sugar and add it to there. Now, the recipe I was using use calls for about a fourth cup of lemon juice. You can see I don't measure stuff, so <laughs> I just get close. Okay, and the lemon juice is going to help with the canning keeping it preserved longer because of the acid in the lemon juice. So, now we're getting that up to a really good boil. You want it to boil hard, even when you stir it, you don't want it to stop boiling. So, and watch out when it starts boiling and you're adding sugar, it can froth up. All you gotta do is just take it off the heat immediately. As soon as you see it start to rise, get it off the heat. And it'll go back down. But then you add your sugar. I added four cups for the, I mean, what you should, people, you know, the recipes I've seen, they want you to add to this much, they want you to add eight cups, but ugh, I just can't add that much sugar to such a good fruit already. I like my stuff to taste like the fruit, not like the sugar, so I added, I always cut the sugar in half, and sometimes that affects your pectin use. You just have to read the box on how much you're making. This actually took two boxes of pectin to get it to where I like it. And, you know, it's still a little runny. But after it comes out of the refrigerator, it's a little harder. So I probably could have used three bags of pectin in this. But, you know, just read the instructions on the pectin you're using because sometimes they're all different. Sometimes it comes in a jar, and you got to teaspoon it out, and it all kind of goes with the sugar you're using and how much fruit you got in there. So, you know, just be aware of that. The pectin you're using could be a little different. So, but to me, you can't go wrong. This stuff, even if it's a little runny, I'll throw it on some ice cream and have a heyday. So, <laughs> but anyway, get that sugar in there, stir it up, and you're going to boil that for about a minute. Really a hard boil. Then you're going to take it off the heat, and while it's hot, you're going to put it in your cans, or your jars. Sorry. Uh, 
fill the jars up. I always fill my jars up to about right there. And seal them, put them in your water bath, and you're going to do that for five or ten minutes, depending on the size and how many. So I done mine for five minutes, and they all sealed real good. So if you want to go ten minutes, that's fine. But Ben's, you're putting it in there hot. You don't have to process it near as long as if it was cool. So by the time you're done, this is what you got. Good old jam. Picked every berry in this myself, made it myself, and I guarantee you it tastes good. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, hope you learned something, and hope this kind of makes you want to go out, pick some berries, and get some jam. This is some great stuff. Kids love it, especially on ice cream. And you know, just God's grocery store is the best there is. Get out there, take advantage of it, and if you like what you see, like us on Facebook, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and share us with your friends. That's the only way we can get out there is by you guys' word of mouth. Uh, until next time, you know, thanks again. Thanks for all the support. And you know, God bless you all. I'll see you next time. For tons more videos, go to our YouTube channel, Wild for the Outdoors. You can also see them at www.wildfortheoutdoors.com and visit our online forum. And don't forget to go to Facebook, like us, share us with your friends, and hey, remember, it's your God-given duty to manage this land. Don't forget to get your copy of Trapping with T-Mac today. Almost 90 minutes of fun trapping action in the foothills of the Ozarks.